Hello, investors. It is Ted Zhang, Associate Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, August 22nd, 4.35 4 p.m., coming to you from Fort Lauderdale with tonight's Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. So the state of the market, we're still in the uptrend despite today's relatively weak action, and we'll definitely go over that and the implications heading into Jackson Hole Powell's speech tomorrow. The trend gauge, we still currently have green arrows for market leaders, short-term, medium-term, and long-term trends. We are still above the 21 EMA, 50-day moving average, and 20 and 200-day moving average on the major indexes. So today, S&P um, and NASDAQ, or Qs, saw an outside reversal. Digestion is definitely expected out of 9 out of 10 days up. So the key now is to see whether if today was just a simple profit taking day or if there's more to it. And you can't know that until the future plays itself out. So what happened today? 21 over 21 list down 1.06%, two up, two neutral, 17 down. Big eight down 2.32%, RG8 down 1.3%. S&P down 0.89%, equal weighted down 0.28%, Q's down 1.59%, QQEW down 1.28%, Dow down 0.37%, mid caps down 0.59%, Russell down 0.87%, Global 6040 down 0.63%, and Grotection down about 0.93%. So at first glance, you could already probably conclude or tell that today the majority of the selling was from the big tech and tech in general as you can see that the rsp and equal weighted were down less than their um, counterparts the s p weighted and the q's weighted and then the dow big caps and russell all sold off a decent a, a, a significantly less than the big tech the big eight and the nasdaq um, using the cues as a proxy. So jumping right into the charts, as always, starting off with S&P 500, like I talked about, um, actually that is the NASDAQ, this is S&P 500. We had an outside day reversal, we tried to push higher today and then reverse engulf the previous candle. And I did a daily video a while ago talking about these outside day key reversal day candles and they often mark at least short-term tops you can find exceptions like this day which we just continued higher but eventually rolled over to the 21 ema for example this let's say the short-term top this as well this as well right here uh right here and right here if you look back more we have this day here we have this day here uh, this day here so you get the point. Um, after today, this is definitely still within the realms of normal, normal action. And a key level we are watching, which will be shown in the till of tape or written down there, is this right here. The highs of this bearish engulfing candle. The day after the last FOMC, where we got weak manufacturing data, and that caused us the outside reverse as well on 8.1. So that 55.66, 55.65-ish level is key. So to go on the five minute chart, we actually came down to it and we undercut and reclaimed it. So that's actually that's a, actually a really big sign of strength. So we continue to watch that level. Um, it's also happens to be where the AEMA is almost starting to catch up to that level as well. Currently at 5540. By tomorrow, it could just be at that level. NASDAQ, same action, bearish and golfing. Um, we're back to the 50-day moving average and the EMA, and also the highs of that bearish engulfing day. We closed just under it at 474.85. Uh, that high was 475.55. But as you can see, the after hours were pretty much just right there. Also, so we have a lot of confluence there. We have that high, the 50-day, the EMA, and then if you go in the weekly, you also have the 10-week moving average. So what I'd like to see here is us maybe hold in tomorrow with a small tight day, 
um, then co come back to the highs and start building a pivot sideways before we head higher so that we could digest some of the some of the huge move that we had in the past two weeks. The Dow outside reversal as well, just normal action coming to this declining tops line. Nothing really to say here. Mid caps, definitely stronger. Try to make a new high, but reverse back into yesterday's candle. Still strong action. This 3056 spot looks definitely like the area of resistance. Russell, similar thing. Try to make a new high, but back into yesterday's range. Still normal, 821 EMA bullish cross aligned with the 50 and 200. So very, still healthy action there. VIX is back up to 17, a little spike today. We definitely don't want to see the VIX get over 20 and special 30. 30 is usually correction slash bear market warning. Um, I should take that back. Over 20 is usually a pullback slash correction warning. And over 30, persistently above 30, is a bear market warning. The dollar continues to slide, but bounce today. If you go on the weekly, we are at this huge area of support. We actually broke down below, but we have this horizontal line here. Currently reclaim that as well. Um, this is a huge level. If we continue to break, the dollar looks like it officially enters a stage four decline, and who really knows where it can go. Um, that would definitely not be great for the U.S. consumer, as that would make exports more or imports more expensive for U.S. consumers. And that can actually put some pressure on consumer prices. Gold, just hang in there in your all-time highs, create action. Gold miners as well, broke out, pulled back, finding support at the AEMA, good action. Silver, double bottom base is starting to form. We reclaimed this 2609 area. Now we're looking to retest it. Above 2891 is a buy spot. IBIT is the Bitcoin chart. It's just still base building. I'll go over to my trading view to showcase the Bitcoin chart because it's better here. We've had a massive move up in the last year. Let's go on the weekly, actually. Over 350%. And this correction so far has been a max of 33%. So definitely still a healthy, healthy base building action on the daily undercut reclaim 56%. 700, 600 is still holding. We back tested it, held, and now we're starting to build a little VCP uh, low cheat setup here. So above the 62,000 level, and we could probably get moving a bit higher. But as always, the big time frames always rule the lower ones, and we're still in a huge range for the time being. Bond index broke out here. Honestly, for bonds, I'm going to start for instead of BND, TLT, TYX, TNX. For my videos, I'm going to start using uh, the futures on trading view as well as the, the the interest rates or the yields. So the one year continues to hold in, but it's building a bear flag. Two year as well, same with 10 year and 30 year. And then the bond futures, we're building a flag here, uh, looking to break out. Just forming a really constructive flag. See that flag. I'll draw that in there. Same with the five-year notes, 10-year notes, and T-bond futures. Um, another thing I like to look at is this Bank of America High Yield Effective Index. If you were to plot an S&P line against this chart, it is almost, almost perfectly inverse, or even better, a NASDAQ. Maybe I could do that for you here. If I do a QQQ chart, let's do new pain, and if we were to zoom out, let's see. Uh, as you can see, as the Bank of America High Yield Index, which means investors and traders will, are unwilling to buy high yield or junk bonds unless they yield a higher premium or pays them a higher interest. That just means that investors think that the bonds are inherently riskier at the time and so they demand a higher perspective return. And when that happens, as you can see, when the high yield bonds rise, NASDAQ is falling. And here, when we're falling, when, when the high yield bonds are declining, NASDAQ is rising. Then when the high yield bonds start rising again, or high yield effective yield starts rising again, NASDAQ went to that correction late 23. And finally now, 
the high yield effective yield, the high yield index has been falling, we've been in this bull market right now. So that's just another tool I'm looking at, um, the inverse correlation between the high yield uh, junk bonds and the NASDAQ and S&P. And right here, I have the credit spreads plotted uh, between the high yield and then the 10 year yield. And seeing credit spreads narrow is definitely a risk on sign. During that crash, quote unquote, mini crash we had, we had a spike in, in this in credit spreads, which usually signals that people are in people are fearful. As you can see, 2020, huge spike in high yield credit spreads or in credit spreads and went to almost 11. During this bear market, when we near the bottom, we're at 5.5 to 6 between the Bank of America high yield index and then the 10 year. And this time we got to about four, we're down to three. So now onto the tail of the tape. What is notable here today? Well, it's Thursday. So we got some revised numbers for the AAII. Bulls came in at 51.6% up nine from last week. So definitely pretty frothy sentiment numbers again. Bears dropped below historical averages at 23.7%, down five. NAM is back into the higher ranges at 75 plus 18. We're still in the bull case. Uh, we're above the 21, above all the moving averages. So from our rules, we can't be bearish above the 21 EMA. That is just how trend falling works. Bear case would be if we broke below the 21 EMA, then we'll start to get more defensive. So news. You could say that today's market weakness could be in anticipation of 10 a.m. Powell Jackson Hole tomorrow. Uh, people might have some recency bias from the one in 2022 that led to a huge market sell-off. Historically, though, it doesn't lead. To, it's pretty much a nothing burger. But we are in we are in a pretty interesting spot with the Fed. People calling that the Fed were behind the curve, that they were late on inflation, and now they're too late to cut rates. So there's definitely a lot of pressure in that front. And then there's also a lot of political pressure. We've seen the BLS job numbers revised down 818,000. Uh, that just shows that our economy is weaker than we actually expected. And from the actual, from the job numbers that we received in the last year, and that definitely does not reflect well on the Democrats. So there's definitely going to be some political pressure as well from the chair, even though they they supposedly are an independent organization. So today, the keys we're watching is volatility into 10 a.m. Um, Friday, Powell Jackson speech. Yes, we did see that. We saw a sell-off and a NASDAQ distribution day. Day count, I have it as up 9 out of 10 to consolidation 1. If we break below the 8 and 21, then we'll start the down count. But for now, we'll call it consolidation. Um, consolidation is definitely deserved after nine out of 10 days of. 10 days above the eight EMA, 21, eight days above the 21 EMA. Expectations are still positive. Uh, SPX ATR is still quite elevated at 1.35%. Hence, the VIX is about at 15 as well. Strong sectors today, bond prices, banks, crude, energy, and financials. Bond yields are down today. No, bond yields are actually up today. Let's revise that. Bond prices were down. Bond yields were up. Dollar was down. Um, tech, discretionary, semis, gold, silver, uh, steel, and bio. RVAB rose a bit to 1.42. We had an offensive trim in Kava into earnings. We sold Starbucks. Uh, we bought some Meta, and then we added to Nvidia as well. So our keys today, um, the reaction to 10 a.m., Powell Jack's whole speech heading into tomorrow. That's going to be key and the main thing we are watching. Bottom line, S&P, NASDAQ, outside reversals, digestion is expected. So really now we need to see the local leaders hold up, build constructive uh, drifting sideways slash downward action instead of huge reversals, bearish engulfing candles, base failures, pivot failures, um, and then failing below key moving averages is what we don't want to see. Now, back to some charts.
couple charts of interest before I get into the 21 over 21 list. GEV, really just nice IPO base. Some nice move up and built this range here. We broke out, pulled back into the base, which can often happen. Built another tight pivot and now is poking its head out. So closing at the highs of the day while the market closed at lows is definitely a good sign. You can see the RS line is also building a cup of candle as well. So this breaks out, I'd like to see the RS line confirm. And this is definitely one we are watching in that alternative energy space. INSM is another one that broke into new all-time highs on volume as well. This has made a 285% move and only corrected 50%, which to me signals the supply and demand in the stock. is just pure accumulation. We had RS line new highs today with that blue dot, 99 RS rating. So it's just extraordinary, extraordinarily strong. The initial gap was caused by really good, really positive phase trial data for their inhalation lung delivery. Um, and so this is definitely another favorable name. So heading to the 21 over 21 list, only four names up today. Let's go over them. SE, post earnings drift action, continues higher. Let's look at the weekly, both this huge line. This earnings is still decelerating. So um, this is definitely pricing in future earnings and future revenues. As you can see, 2024 estimates 439%. 90% 2025. HWN Aerospace continues its post earnings drift as well. We gapped up, pulled back into the top of the base, found support and U turn, and so far just trending above the eight EMA. Eli Lilly continues to do really well after its post earnings um, action, post earnings drift as well. 8, 21, and 50 are all aligned now. This is just looking really great. The demand for obesity drugs continue higher and this company is probably the next $1 trillion company sooner or later. And look at these earnings, just huge breakout um, on the earnings, four bucks, five bucks, six, six, seven, seven, six, and now a 16 for 2024, $22 a share for 2025. And that's actually another thing we do look for. Not only do we want to see a breakout on the chart from nice constructive basis within uptrends, we also want to look at breakout years. This is what we call breakout years, where earnings are also breaking out. If you were to plot this earnings line, you'd see a breakout as well. TMX, another one that ended green, also post earnings drift, tried to break out, but fell prey to the pressure of the markets, uh, chopped around here, and now has been drifting upward against the AEMA. This, this is not really the smoothest trend, as you can see. Days are just quite choppy, um, unlike if we look at in NVIDIA how smooth it just trades when it has uptrends. And that's kind of the ideal stock we want to find ourselves in. So on the downside, actually, NVIDIA is the name that's down the most today on the 21 over 21 list. Distribution day, out today reversal, back today EMA. It is building a pivot just like what we did before uh, last earnings. Um, we came down, broke the 50, undercut and reclaimed some key levels like we did, now building a pivot again. Earnings is six days. And since this has been, since this is a $3 trillion company and is a huge component of the S&P and NASDAQ, this will be really key. What we don't want to see is a news failure, which means huge beat and raise, top and bottom line, raise guidance, but the market sells off or sells NVIDIA off. That to me would potentially signal that this bull cycle in AI at least is coming to at least a current end. GDX, second biggest loser, but still acting extremely well. Maybe building a higher handle. Carvana, still really an all-time high. It's bearish and golfing, but super low volume, still above 150, acting well. Coherent, Inside Day being the fourth biggest down name on our 21, 21 over 21 list. Again, post earnings drift action. A really nice handle here with be really attractive. And I think I precisely think that's what the market is starting to do. So like I talked about before, we want to see if the market is to come down, let's say, let's go to the NASDAQ deposit. If the market does come down a bit, maybe test the 21 EMA, put another lower low and then find support here and then start rallying back again into 18,000 and build a cheat like that. What we want to see on stocks, like for example, NVIDIA is a similar thing, 
where it builds a pivot. GDX, similar thing as well. Maybe we come lower here, some back and fill action. Carvana, that's already in highs. Coherent builds the handle like I threw before. App Levin maybe comes in a bit, a couple lower lows, find support on the third day, build the handle as well. If we saw that kind of action proliferate, that is where you can really get aggressive um, with stocks breaking to new highs. However, if we see the opposite action and we see NVIDIA just, we see NVIDIA, for example, completely just break down and then form a lower high and then continue lower like that, or a Carvana has a failed breakout to the base, coherent, see the double top here, it fails back in like that. And starts, we start seeing volatility all over the place. App Levin also, let's say we see a double top with the market pulling in. That on the other hand would tell me maybe we are headed for another leg down. So you can only judge the action in real time. And that is what we're doing every single day on our videos. We have our podcast tomorrow. Um, and then we'll have the nightly video by Don. And then I'll, and then Connor and I will be back with our weekend video this weekend. So is there anything else? I believe that is it. So let me pull up the cover page. And as always, we would love to hear from you. That's going to wrap it today. My email is ted at revereasset.com. Twitter is Ted H. Zhang. Our phone is 855 Real Wealth. That is 855 732 5932. Our website is revereasset.com. And our YouTube channel is Revere Asset. You can also reach out to Dan Don at revereasset.com as well as Connor at revereasset.com. Um, we named our flagship portfolio Grow Protection with a dual mandate to grow assets while we're in the uptrend, which we are in now and protect your money in downtrends. And that is our main mission, is to fulfill that dual mandate. Just like the Fed has their own dual mandate, we we aim with all our ability to fulfill ours. And if you're interested in becoming a client, please reach out. And with that said, I'll wrap it, wrap it up for today. It's Thursday, August 22nd. Um, it's 4.58 p.m. now. This is Ted Zhang with the Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thank you for listening and have a great day.